In this video, we're going to be looking at compound interest and depreciation. Now, in order to be able to do compound interest and depreciation, you need to be good with percentages. So you can go back and look at my percentages videos before you do this one. Just to get warmed up, we're just going to look at a few examples. So we need to be good at finding that multiply which increases something by a certain percentage or in terms of depreciation, decreases something by a certain percentage. Okay, so let's look at how we do these. So here we've got increase and I want to know if you want to increase something by 10%, what would the multiplier be? Uh, and when you're increasing, it's like compound interest because when you put money in the bank and you get in compound interest, they increase your money. And of course, it could be used in other contexts as well. Okay, 10%. And the multiplier will be 1.1. So if you multiply something by 1.1, it will automatically increase it by 10%. And you don't need to do the other method, which you probably learned, where you find out 10%, add it on to the original amount. This way, it will do it all in one go and keep your original amount as well. Okay, 20%. And that will be... 1.2. So hopefully you're getting the pattern. And then we've got 5%. Now that won't be 1.5 because that'll increase it by 50%. That'll be 1.05. And then you've got 2.5%. So 2% will be 1.02 and of course 5%. Half a percent will add a 5 at the end. So 1.025. And then we've got 0.5%, which is a tricky one. It won't be 1.05 because that'll be 5%. So we put another 0 and then a 5. And that'll be half a percent, 0.5%. Now let's look at decreases. And this happens in our example of depreciation. And of course, it could also happen if you're reducing a price in a sale and many other contexts. Okay, so reduce by 10%. You times it by 0 0.9. 20%, 0 0.8. 15%. Hopefully getting the pattern, 0 0.85. 50%, give you a moment to think about it. And you should have said 0 0.5. And a slightly tricky one, 13% reduction. And you should have said 0 0.87. Okie doke. So you need to know these multipliers for this topic. So now that we're warmed up, let's go ahead and look at some questions. Rohan puts £1,200 into a bank at 5% interest, and that's 5% compound interest. Okay, so when you put money in a bank and they're giving you interest, they're increasing your money. And in this case, they're increasing it by 5%. Part A wants us to work out how much his money will be after the first year. So what you'll do is you take his amount and just times it by the multiplier, which increases it by 5%. And you should have got 1,260. And that's our part A done. So you just times it by the multiplier. Increasing by 5%, the multiplier is 1.05. Now part B wants us to work out how much his money will be after three years. Now it's more or less the same. This is initial amount times by 1.05 but you're going to times 1.05 again and again so what you just do is times it by 1.05 to the power of 3 and that gives us 1389.15 okay part c it wants us to work out how much you'll have after five years so what you do is again the 1200 times 1.05 and you do it to the power of how many years. So that's the pattern you should have noticed. Um, when we had one year in part A, it was 1.05 to the power of one, which is just 1.05. And when it was three years, we had 1.05 to the power of three. And this time we're gonna have 1.05 to the power of five. Let's look at another question. Okay, so looking at this example, Sam buys a car for 15,000 pounds. And the car depreciates by 15% a year in value. In the first part, we need to find out what's the value of the car after three years. And the second part, what's the value of the car after 10 years? So part A, as usual, we take the amount, which is 15,000, 
and we multiply it by the multiplier and you're depreciating by 15% and you should know the multiplier in a depreciation would be 0 0.85 now remember you the power is the number of years you want and you want three years so 0 0.85 to the power of three and that gives us Now part B asks us after 10 years. So again, the same thing, the value times the multiplier and because depreciation it's 0 0.85 and it's a power of number of years, which is 10. I hope you found that video useful. Support us by liking, subscribing, and share this with your friends. And if you still got some more questions on anything, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where you'll find your questions answered.